Hello, my name is Bobby, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you a more complex use case with behaviors for ScriptRunner for Jira Cloud. Up until now, the videos that we've shown you and the examples we've shown you have been relatively straightforward, but showcase the powers of behaviors in terms of being able to dynamically show and hide fields, preset values in your fields to give you that template functionality, or being able to make fields read only or shown or hidden for users in a particular user group. Following on from that example, user groups are obviously a group that are applied to Jira as a whole, but groups can be mapped onto roles or users can have specific roles in specific projects. And you may want to have your behaviors function differently based upon the roles that a user has in your particular project. Now, the reason that this is a more complicated example is that we are going to be utilizing the Jira Cloud REST API and the Jira Cloud REST API doesn't have an API endpoint, to my knowledge at least, to allow us to say, for this user and this project, give me the roles that they have. Instead, we have to go from a different angle and we have to say, for this project, get me all of the roles, go through those roles to check to see if my user is part of those roles, and then based upon that, build some logic out. So just to run through the, the example that we have in here, I'm, my behavior applies to four different fields, the summary, description, priority, and assignee. The logic I have in my project webinar is that I have three types of users. One that a user that is neither primary or secondary, a user that is a secondary or a user that is a primary user. The logic I want to apply and that I have running is if you are neither of these users, then the, these four fields are not visible to you. If you are the secondary user, these fields are visible to you, but not editable, so read only. And finally, if you're a primary user, they are visible and you can access them. So just to show you this working, I'm going to clear all of these fields for my user. And then here, I'm going to click to create a new issue. And we're going to see that the summary, description, and priority field, and assignee fields are hidden from me. So you can see that they've disappeared now. If I modify my user to instead be a secondary user and go through that same process and click create, we can see that when the behavior executes, the summary and description fields, etc., will stay, but stay read only for me. And finally, just to show working, if I set my user to be a primary user and I click create, the behavior will run. It will execute, detect that I am a primary user in this particular project and give me full access to those fields. This also runs on existing issues. So if I go to, let's, if I go to this particular story here, I have full access to every single one of those fields because I'm again, still a primary user. So we can go and modify the description, the summary, etc. If I go and change this to be secondary user, and reopen that issue, we'll see that the behavior will execute and I will no longer have access to be able to modify them. So just to run you through the use case so that when I go through the script now, um, we can see that you, you understand what the logic is going to be doing and how it's going to be working. So let's go through the script. So in my script, the first thing I do is I set all of the four fields to hidden. That's their default state unless the user has a permission set to be able to see and start to modify them. Next, I have my roles here. So I'm actually just going to clear this down because there's only two roles we're currently applying. So the primary and the secondary. The reason I had these expanded out is because maybe I have a set of roles rather than primary user that needs the access, et cetera. So you can expand that out into an array. Next, we get the current user information. And then we use the context of the issue so we can use the um, behaviors API which is defined in a documentation down here you can see we can get the context which is spoken about again in another video and from here we can get the project ID now we have the project ID we need to go and get and make the API call to get all of the roles for that particular project because again as I mentioned at the beginning of this video we cannot say I have this user and this project get me all the roles that they have Instead, we have to go through all the roles and manually to check to see if the user is part of those roles. So here we get all of the roles. 
and then we perform a loop. The loop get to get all of those rolls goes through each single one. And here we're doing something slightly unique. Basically, if you were to, if you make this API call, you get a list of um, URLs that you can that, um, return back. So for example, it will just be an array of URLs. At the end of each of those URLs is the ID of each role that is available in this project. So what we're doing here is we're getting the returned URL, we're splitting it by the slash, and we're getting the last value. So what this would basically do, let's use an example string. If I had A slash B slash C, splitting it by slash will give me an array with A, B, and C. And then getting the item with the length minus one gets me C. Arrays start at zero. So if I have an array of three items, A, B, and C, A is zero, B is one, C is two. So I have to get three minus one to get C, which is an array slot two. So now we have the ID of the role that we're currently looping through. We then make the API call to get more information about that role. We get all of the actors for that role and we check to see if the user account that we got right at the beginning of this script is present in that um, particular set of information. If it is, and the current role that we're processing is in my array, so it's a primary user, then we say user is true, a secondary, true. So again, just to loop, just to recap that loop, because it's a little bit wordy, get all of the roles for the URL that's returned in the array, get me the end value, which is the key. Use that key or the ID to get the more information about that particular role. And then check to see if the user is in that role. If the user is in that role, so we're interested, we check to see if that role is included in either the primary or secondary arrays that we've defined here at the top. And if it is, we flip this user in primary or user in secondary Boolean to be true so that we now know the user is in either the primary or secondary user groups. After that, it's quite straightforward. If they are in either the primary or secondary user groups, we set these fields to be visible because regardless, we want them to be visible for both of those groups. If they're in the secondary, we set read only to be true. If they're primary, we set the read only to be false. So if they're primary, they can access. If they're secondary, they can no longer access. And then we save. And that script, uh, just also to recap, is defined on load and in both issue views, as we saw previously. So an example of how you can use the context available to you, as well as Jira Cloud's REST API, but even if Jira Cloud's REST API doesn't necessarily give you directly the information that you need for your particular logic, you can instead use other API calls and a little bit of manual work to get the information you need so that you can create more custom, more powerful logic using your behaviors in Script Runner for Jira Cloud. Hopefully this has been useful. Thank you so much for your time and have a great rest of the day.